I just went hiking and I want to do a little video vlog for you before I start working in the yard. So I've got my yard work outfit on, girl power hat for my friend Shannon. And I'm going to go move bricks. Neil does all the yard work, planning and set goals. I just do the weeding and pick up his piles of cut palm leaves. And today I get to do brick moving. <laughs> I think it's fun because it's strength training without knowing you're really doing strength training. Unintentional workout of lifting heavy things is go out in your yard as I did a few years ago. We're bragging up bags of DG granite we put in our walkways here. And now I get to move piles of bricks from here to over there by the olive tree. So we're going to make a little base around the fruit trees. So working out outside, getting time in nature, we went for a hike this morning. We usually do a long run on the weekend, but Neil's been battling plantar fasciitis. Have you had that? It just is reincurring. He's doing shock therapy with my friend, Wendy, physical therapist in Encinitas, trying to get rid of it. But it's always, you know, not just treating the problem, but why, what's wrong in your mechanics that you keep getting problems, getting injuries. So you really want to work backwards and figure out what else is causing that reoccurring injury. So. Instead of running our long runs Sunday, we went for a hike because last week we were in Park City for a week and it was amazing time in the mountains hiking. We ended up doing 55 miles over the whole week. It was super fun just to be in and out of the trees and getting elevation training and more. So we did a hike here called Day on Daily Ranch and did a seven mile hike and love to trail run on part of it. And but some of it when it's steeper, it's just fun hiking up. So I just want to take this time before I start going back to my yard work to explain what is metabolic chaos, to explain a little bit more about my journey and my purpose of what I've gone through the past 10 years and why I do what I do to help you, the ambitious high performer from doing too much in life and really being a health optimizer, doing proactive, like learn what's going on with your body, how to be your best self now, instead of hopefully not waiting until you're burned out, broken, and something's seriously wrong, multiple reasons, what we call an FDN as practitioners, metabolic chaos. If you want to avoid that, we need to start working now. I'd rather you work with me now before you have a ton of problems it's kind of just on the edge of say adrenal fatigue before it gets to be what I had adrenal exhaustion and really looking at your blood chemistry markers, your microbiome, looking at organic acids tests called oats, heavy metal tests, really learning about how to be your best self in the future by testing and not guessing, investing in your health. So you're not going to be having tons of problems, potentially a lot of metabolic health problems heart issues. So I want to go through a few things to share what I've gone through to see if that helps you. Now, an FDN practitioner, I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner. I've done Paul Checks, the Czech Institute's holistic lifestyle coach. I've been a personal trainer since I was in college, did ACSM certification. And that was a long time ago. I'm NASM certified personal trainer and gone through tons of different trainings over my 30 years, plus yoga and Pilates, so I kind of, I've always tried to do it all and learn a little bit about everything. Now, I just finished Wild Health six month course that will go back and look at my clarity report. I just redid my labs. But just before we start my book, I'm going to work on, start rewriting it. But my book, Life is Not a Race, It is a Journey, is something that happened to me, which really defines me as a person and how I like to do my coaching programs as an FDM practitioner, we really look at resolving metabolic chaos. So what is metabolic chaos? It's an interplay of the hidden stressors and imbalances rather than a single cause. So what happened to me that I know a lot of clients struggle with when they come to me is that they're just, you're not feeling your best. You're gaining weight for no reasons. You can't sleep. You can't recover from workouts. You can't seem to get stronger. You just don't feel you're at your best self. And I, I rather you that than those people that 
just think I'm getting older. This is how it is. This is as good as it gets. This is my new normal. It's a bunch of crap. I want you to strive to be excellent, not normal, and really work on what can I do to take ownership of my health today to be my best self in 5, 10, 20 years. Now, metabolic chaos highlights that our body's internal systems, a hormone, immune system, digestion, detoxification, energy systems, neurotransmitter pathways, they all relate to what we call as metabolic chaos. And in internal stressors that accumulate, you don't know really what's going on unless you run the functional lab testing. So we always suggest, you know, three to five functional lab tests to really see where you are. And we work on putting the missing pieces of a health puzzle together to help figure out what is the best. And I'll go back to that clarity report of my genetics. So in metabolic chaos, as a health investigator, we're looking at multiple labs, as I said, and look at the whole picture, not treat one thing. So we have multiple root causes. Metabolic chaos isn't caused by one factor, but rather a combination of stressors, environmental toxins, poor nutrition, chronic infections, emotional stress, that all overwhelms the beaker of stress, the hypothalamus, the HPA axis system. Hypothalamus sends signal to pituitary gland to get the adrenal gland to respond also remember in other episodes have gone over the HP hypothalamus pituitary also talks to the thyroid and your gonads, your ovaries, the sex hormones, they're all this communication system. So when we have so much communication to the adrenals to respond from this threat, this chronic stress, we end up getting this metabolic chaos. And so many things can go on and your body that you don't know are related to this metabolic chaos imbalances everywhere, this domino effect. A lot of times we hear the analogy of our health as this if one piece is off, one piece of the orchestra is broken, one instrument, we can lead to all sorts of different problems because the body works together as a whole. So we are interconnected that when one body system is compromised, it can trigger dysfunction in other systems. For example, gut issues can lead to hormone imbalances, which contribute to metabolic problems. And we don't want to mask the symptoms. The symptoms experienced by individuals might be far removed from the actual root causes. So if I have a headache or if I have some joint pain, you just don't know that it might be coming from your gut. For example, the symptoms that you might experience are gonna be different for everyone. The concept of metabolic chaos helps explain why addressing only symptoms without addressing the underlying complexity often leads to temporary relief instead of lasting results. So if you're just treating the symptoms, even in nutritional or naturopathic medicine, you might just be treating symptoms, taking this for that based on your functional lab test, just as a doctor might. This is why I do what I do, because that's what happened to me. I saw eight different doctors in traditional medicine, in Chinese medicine, in functional medicine, and naturopathic medicine. I kept feeling that I was getting the same response. Take these labs and then take these supplements. It wasn't figuring out exactly what was causing it. And a lot of it from my, my experience was the way I was living life every day, which is why I say life is not a race. It, it's a journey all the time because I did not seriously change my approach to life until 2020. And I think maybe a lot of people did in 2020 because our world changed and maybe got a taste of what it's like to slow down and change your lifestyle a little more. And now it's really hard to go back to how I was living life in 2019, right? So maybe you relate to that. So we wanna look at the whole individual and personalize what is your action plan based on investigation of your functional lab tests. So we're looking under the hood, revealing these imbalances, and then we're working on your external stressors, your lifestyle, your nutrition, your exercise, your movement, hydration happiness, gratitude. So we want an individualized approach. The goal is to identify and address unique contributors to your metabolic chaos 
as you are a unique individual. We want to restore your balance, your body's innate intelligence to bring you back to balance as homostasis. We need a personalized approach. What works for me, Debbie, isn't going to work for you. We are all different. Our lifestyle is different. Our schedules are different. Our family life, our work schedule. We want to really get a program that's designed for me as a unique individual, Debbie Potts. So in summary, metabolic chaos represents the idea that the health issues that are really due to one single cause, it wasn't just because I was doing Ironmans and half marathons and 50K runs. I wasn't having my health issue because of just training and racing too much. There was other reasons, but that's a big part of it. So there's a combination of hidden factors that are disrupting the body systems. For me, it was a combination of my external stressors of running my business and having constant stress of running a fitness studio and trying to survive high rent in Bellevue, Washington and competition kept popping up every corner as I opened up and I was the only one doing T-Rex circuit training and personal training and small group training. And suddenly a few years later, well, there's mom and pop brick and mortar shop studios everywhere. And then there's orange theory open up and then the soul cycle. And so it was a constant stress for me and I had trouble sleeping and that's a whole domino effect there. I was also doing keto, low carb fasting that I probably at my level of exercise and at uh, early 40 year old, 42, I was probably doing way too much of that as well. So metabolic chaos is not just a single cause, but a stem of combination of hidden factors disrupting the body systems. Effective functional nutrition involves untangling this chaos by identifying and addressing these multiple contributors in a personalized and holistic manner, which is why I call my program the holistic method with the whole you as our focus. So as a FDM practitioner, we're not focused on treating any specific disease or symptom. It's important to understand that our approach as FDM practitioners is about, isn't about targeting one condition because that's not how we work. We're not doctors. We're not nurse practitioners. So we do not diagnose. We do not treat any specific ailments. Some people come through the program may have medical credentials, but most of us complete the FDN program with various backgrounds and traditional medicine. Doctors typically run tasks or ask specific questions to determine if certain criteria are met, leading to a diagnosis. Once diagnosed, there's established treatment protocols that usually start with less risky options, gradually escalating if symptoms persist. That's not how FDM practitioners work or nutritional therapy practitioners. We approach it a little differently. So we are working with clients as myself with chronic stress-related illness with no end in sight if we don't change the way we live life. Standard medicine focuses on treating the symptoms and not necessarily correcting the underlying imbalances that are causing them. Overall symptoms of health and wellness continue to decline instead of improving, even with all the advancements in today's technology. So medical doctors, this is why I'm really big on trying to have an integrative approach and work with naturopath, functional medicine, integrated doctors to look at a team work. So work with your doctor, but hopefully they are wanting to work with a practitioner as myself, because we have to work on the principles of health building and, you know, working with a certified coach with doctors would be amazing if doctors would collaborate, but they often don't. So we want to resolve metabolic chaos. It's a state of health that exists because of the complexities of our metabolism and underestimate the influences from the environment. So we want to have this correlation between the symptoms and the cause. It's, it's very unpredictable. So metabolic chaos is when intervention based on traditional reliable cluster of symptoms produces only a marginal response. The new way we want to look at working with different diseases is to help us understand how the symptoms are attributed to diagnosis. Treatment for that diagnosis often fails. And 
we're not likely looking at upstream, looking north to see what are part of the systems in our body that are causing, that are out of whack, they're out of balance. And we need to rebalance and I always think reset, reboot, recalibrate. So we have these hidden stressors that are creating these imbalances. But if we don't know what they are, we don't know, unless we do testing, if we don't work on figuring out how to resolve them, then we have this cascade into other areas of our health. And then metabolic chaos just continues. We get more and more crazy random symptoms, not realizing they're all connected. They're not so random. So we get more of a serious dysfunction. And depending on your weak links in your metabolism, this can lead to more serious problems. So if the symptoms don't matter, or at least they're not the real problem, the results, they're, the symptoms are the result of the problem. So the contributors of metabolic chaos are at cause, and metabolic chaos is the effect until metabolic chaos itself becomes a primary and wanted condition. So the results and contributors of metabolic chaos, adrenal-related dysfunction, we call HPA axis, circadian rhythm disruptions, or nutrient breakdown and absorption, pro-oxidant and antioxidant imbalances, dysbiosis and gut malfunction, systematic inflammation, immune deficiency, detox problems. So we work as practitioners through a step-by-step -step assessment to identify your underlying conditions, to identify your unique healing opportunities. So we are working together to coach up the body's innate healing ability or what we also call the vital reserve in our clients as we coach down the contributors to your metabolic chaos. When we get results, or maybe we don't get enough results, we have to course correct and really look at functional lab tests really helps to correlate with your symptoms and your complaints and identify your areas of opportunities. So that sounds and if you might need more of an individualized approach, find an FDM practitioner as myself that we act more as a health detective, that you're spending more the money of our packages, I find are not just to talk to me each week, messaging and having coaching calls. It's more the time we investigate on what is actually going on and put the missing pieces of your health puzzle together figure out what you need to be doing to be your best self and work with you to meet you where you're at with your own life schedule. So we want to look at the functional lab test results, your history of complaints, and look at different protocols that might work best for you to resolve the issues, not just relieve symptoms, but get you out of this cycle of trial and error. So there's a lot of information in here, but just want to touch on what is HP axis dysfunction? Cortisol is a hormone by the adrenal glands, plays a big role in the response to stress. So we hear acute stress and chronic stress. Hormetic stress is that acute, just short little stressor. But when we have too much chronic stress that leaves, I always think that leaky faucet drip, drip, drip all the time, we get to have this chronic drip of cortisol and leads to imbalances. So signs and symptoms of high cortisol, weight gain, sleep issues, anxiety, mood issues, higher blood pressures, blood sugar imbalances, leading to insulin resistance, bloating, constipation, gut related due to disrupted digestion, low libido, frequent colds and infections because you have a suppressed immune system. You might feel sense of fatigue, even though you're, you have high energy spikes, you might be feeling more experience of fatigue and burnout as I did. Bone mineral loss. You might have reduced bone density and loss of muscle mass over time. You have cravings for sugar and carbs because your body's searching for quick 
sources of energy when you are stressed to run from that lion. Brain fog, forgetfulness, difficulty focusing as memory and concentration issues are a big red flag of high cortisol. So you can't really see this HPA axis sends signal to pituitary gland, to adrenal gland, then we should have this negative food back loop. Say, Kate, okay, I responded to that stress. I'm good. I'm done instead of this constant. So if we have that excessive activation over time is what happened to me. I had low cortisol. So I, for years, however long, I had no idea. I was hyperadrenic, high cortisol. After that, the, the HP axis progression goes from high cortisol to now I'm below optimal low cortisol. So remember, cortisol is not bad. We need to have it higher in the morning, lower at night. There's circadian rhythm opposition of melatonin. Now, over time, as I said, if I didn't stop, if I stopped living my life crazy schedule and racing and training and not eating enough, I wouldn't have gotten to this low cortisol. So that's my point of my business now is to help you identify those red flags and stop before you get them. Or if you skip that part, then we need to figure out how to get out of it, how to repair and get your vibrant self back again. Symptoms of low cortisol, chronic fatigue, low blood pressure, salt cravings, low cortisol can lead to low sodium. Blood sugar imbalances leading to shakiness, irritability, brain fog, depression, feeling flat, unmotivated, experiencing low mood, poor stress tolerance, feeling overwhelmed by minor stressors, having difficulty coping. Unexplained weight loss, loss of appetite, unintended weight loss. Now, if you know my story, I gained 30 pounds and I didn't change anything. I wasn't, I was still exercising. I just did all these amazing races. I had great performances and then I had no energy and couldn't do anything. So I, I don't brag about my races. It just went from feeling amazing to feeling like crap in, I felt like a month. So, you know, really looking at those red flags of when you're high cortisol, so you don't get to this low cortisol level. Sleep, difficult falling asleep or staying asleep because your circadian schedule's all mixed up. As I said, cortisol, melatonin are in opposition. So you need to reset your circadian rhythm. Digestion issues, again, bloating, constipation, slow digestion due to weakened immune system, you might get frequent infections, you might get more parasites as I got blastohominis, I swear from swimming in uh, contaminated waters in Vegas for their 70.3 world championship, the water that no one's allowed to use, but we could for a race. I got sick. Probably people in Ironman, um, the Olympics this year, you know, they swam in that, the Seine was quite contaminated and someone got equal leg like, because if you're under stress, your immune system, the guards are down. So you're going to be more susceptible to getting parasites. You don't have that self-defense there. So those people are going to hear more people that, that got sick from swimming in that water. So there's a delicate balance, you know, cortisol, again, we have this rhythm should be highest in the morning when you wake up and feel alert and gradually decline through the day being lowest at night. So we can sleep better. You don't want to have high cortisol at night. And that's why I like the Dutch test. You can do dried urine tests or saliva tests and see what is your cortisol rhythm at night. And there's different patterns. So we need to look at that test to see your hormones, but see, are you high or low at times a day? Because the protocol for that is going to be different. So we have to look at that. Tons of information you get from that hormone panel, the Dutch test. Now, here's a chart. I should have put this in the beginning, but what I was talking about is this progression. So this is normal homostasis. We adapt to that stress. We get stronger as you're lifting weights. You know, you work out, you have that stress. If you do a sauna or cold plunge, you respond to that stress and get stronger from it. But if you keep breaking down, breaking down, breaking down and not building up, you have that imbalance of catabolic to anabolic. So we get to have this be acute distress is acute phase. And that's where your hyper higher cortisol. Now you can see you progress from this bell curve, the other side of the bell curve, chronic distress. We get in this compensatory phase that I got into. And then I probably got into a little bit of this collapse, exhausted phase. If I did not stop when I, I don't know how people go past because I was so, you know, exhausted, couldn't even pedal on a bike. So I was probably a little bit 
to the beginning of this red phase when I got my huge red flag in, in July, um, 2013. So it was now 10 years ago, but this is probably where I was when I finally had to wake up and go, what the heck is wrong with me? I cannot do anything. So I was forced to be there. So that's my goal is to help you. Hopefully you come see me when you're, you're over here. We don't want to get to this part. So you can fix and repair if you're in this acute distress pretty quickly. But this over here takes years, right? So we want to be preventative, be health optimizers, get better before we get worse. Okay, so a little bit more, the impact of stress. I've done a different interviews on people's shows as our FDN Thrive podcast. Your chronic stress release of cortisol, stress hormone, is critical for managing energy, immune response, recovery. So you can go through and read this, my blog, energy crashes and performance declines, three disruptions, recovery impairment. So for the athlete, you know, all these are really important to look at. How does this chronic stress impact you as an athlete or just a high performer in general, adrenal dysfunction. So you can read all about that. And are you at risk as we age? and you continue to do so much, when do you need to stop, push, pause, and reset? Endurance athletes, we're a little different. And plus, if you're working full-time job and you have a family, maybe it's a little easier as you get older because your kids aren't young, but then maybe you try to fill in the blank for not having kids, so you just keep yourself busy. So cortisol and the stress response, chronic inflammation, I put in a blog to research a little bit of difference between men and women testosterone in men and estrogen and progesterone and testosterone for women, how that can change thyroid function, chronic endurance training with inadequate fueling can suppress your thyroid function, can lead to fatigue, weight gain, depression, insulin sensitivity, endurance exercise generally enhances insulin sensitivity for metabolic health. But when you're constantly being depleted, depleted and under fueled, you can get hypoglycemic and blood sugar dysregulation and the chronic stress continues of high glucose. Cortisol will raise glucose, which will lead to a lot of insulin. So insulin resistance is the end result. Women experience possibly greater variability in glucose regulation. So different phases of your hormone cycle as we age ladies, Affects your carbohydrate needs, nutrient dense foods, not crappy carbs, but energy levels during training you might need to fuel differently as you age. That's something I've been experimenting with and not being afraid of carbohydrates, but choosing good sources and not being afraid of being kicked out of fat burning or I'm going, I'm not going to lose weight if I add this. It's going to help your performance, is what we have to rewire our brain, and think, oh, this isn't going to make me just burn carbs and excess fat, but perhaps even get more fat being burned because I'm able to work harder. Leaky gut. We can talk about microbiome diversity. Excessive training can lead to dysbiosis, imbalance in gut bacteria, contribute to inflammation, digest issues, and mental health and, just, and more. Nutrient absorption and digest issues as we age. There's a big part I see people's leading to malabsorption of nutrients, low stomach acid, sluggish motility, low pancreatic enzymes. I see that when I do the lab testing. Uh, immune function, a healthy gut's essential for immune function. Remember that your immune system is say 80% in your gut. So if you have a dysfunctional gut, dysbiosis, leaky gut from possibly chronic endurance training, that you could have more of a suppressed immune system. So we are more at risk for energy injuries, but infections and illnesses when we have a compromised gut barrier, our gut wall lining. So we want to make sure we have healthy gut, healthy microbiome, healthy gut wall lining. That's why I think S fuels having glutamine while you're doing your zone two training is really helpful. Now, key takeaways for your aging endurance athletes, if you're like me. We want to work on proper nutrition, hydration, recovery. Those are essential to mitigate the negative impacts of endurance exercise on hormones and gut health. Aging athletes need to be mindful of adequate protein, getting our nature's carbs in and the right macro, micronutrients to support hormone balance and gut integrity. 
Tailored fat, balancing our intensity and volume with our recovery is crucial. So looking at your training schedule, make sure you're doing a hard, easy, easy day, you know, looking at heart rate variability, looking at your recovery factors. Aging athletes may need more rest days, more active recovery. So getting your steps in throughout the day, getting mobility and strength training, but maybe so not so much focus on your cardio training. Less is more, I say all the time. So lower overall training volume is compared to your younger counterpart, right? So what I used to do when I was under 40 is quite different than now. I'm doing more an hour bike ride. That's really good workout and doing a 45 minute strength training and walking. And so that'd be different than my old training schedule would be a two, three hour bike ride to two days a week and then a long ride on Saturdays. So very different these days. I never used to think an hour workout, but it is actually that minimal effective dose of that uh, workout. So the next step, if you want to work with a FDM practitioner as myself, here's what we look at. Comprehensive functional lab testing. So we're looking at hormone panels, a GI test, food sensitivity tests are helpful, but they're just telling us what you need to remove to heal leaky gut. It's not forever. Those foods are or it's more, why are those foods on the list? Take them out, then heal, repair your gut. Detox, liver tests, metabolic panels. So looking at different lab tests, we have some basic ones I think everyone needs is a you know, your blood chemistry assessment, a GI test, and maybe organic acids test. But we want to, for sure, looking at your hormones and everything would be a little more personalized, but for sure, gut test and blood chemistry panel. Diet driven assessment. So while we're waiting for your test results, we're getting into what I call the holistic method, looking at your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep hygiene routine, your stress management routine, digestion, how you're eating, when, why, how, where, not just what you're eating, and working on gut health. And then we're also looking at hydration. Are we drinking enough water with minerals throughout the day and getting those electrolytes in? Because when we're exercising, we're not sweating out water, we're sweating minerals. And then of course, happiness, play, laughter. I think we get so intense as high performers that we forget to just be silly, have fun, you know, walk around, wear pigtails, wear crazy bright outfits. That's what I tend to do. Now, we're looking at more of the root causes. Remember the hidden internal sources of chronic stress when we're doing the functional lab test to resolve signs and symptoms that relate to your metabolic chaos. So hormone imbalances, if it's cortisol, thyroid, sex hormones are out of balance, that can lead to fatigue, weight gain, mood swings, and even more. Pinpointing gut issues like bacteria overgrowth, parasites, chronic inflammation that can be driving systemic health problems. Addressing deficiencies in your vitamins, minerals, antioxidants that can impact your energy levels, immune health, and cellular function. Evaluating how your liver and detox pathways are working impacts everything, everything from hormone balance to immune health. So often when I'm working with a client, we find do their labs before we do any protocols. So if you have overgrowth of bacteria, parasites, leaky gut, we want to start with my liver detox phase one, two, and drainage pathways phase three, working at optimal level, because I don't want to do any protocol for say a parasite when we don't have our channels, drainage pa panel, drainage pathways open. So we get a personalized approach. We work on what we say in FDN is a dress protocol, diet, rest, exercise, supplements, and stress reduction. So we take that holistic approach and we really want to resolve your metabolic chaos, but that's going to be different for everybody. So remember our system is complex and everything is interconnected. So we want to have leak, get rid of the dysfunction and imbalances and bring that body back to functioning and balance, right? So we can be living our best life. So a couple of things here on this list, you can look at, there's nine things that are nine signs that you might have a leaky gut. So people that have gas, bloating, diarrhea, IBS, you know, often have different food sensitivities and that's more because you have a leaky gut. So if you have different food allergies or food intolerances, food sensitivities, taking those foods out doesn't solve why are you having reactive to that food? So people doing a food sensitivity and just take those foods out it's not forever. It's 
it's not dealing with why do you have those foods tagged on food sensitivity tests. It's more the point that you have leaky gut and those foods have escaped out of the gut wall lining into the rest of the body. That's what an IgG food test is, antibodies to that food, IgA is in your gut. So when you have IgG food test, these are signs of leaky gut. So we need to remove the foods, 90 days, do a heal and real seal of your gut. Skin issues, acne, rosacea, eczema, mood imbalances, depression, anxiety, brain fog, ADD, ADHD, seasonal allergies, asthma, PCOS, PMS, regular periods, autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, celiac, psoriasis, chronic fatigue issues, fibromyalgia. These are all related to leaky gut. So I bet most of you have a leaky gut. If you've never done a gut repair, I'm always working on, like I'm doing leaky gut supplements now, taking extra glutamine, taking glycine. You know, we want to know what we need to do to address it. So that's what we're doing. Holistic approach, functional lab testing, data analysis, interpretation, identifying your healing opportunities, identifying dysfunction, figuring out what we need to start with first, explain the findings. We do results and recommendation. We work on a customized dress protocol, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and targeted supplements. So you're not just taking random supplements because you heard about it on social media. Then we implement, monitor along the way. So my programs are six months and then some people just keep going and we course correct, retest every four to six months and then just work on creating those priorities, action items, areas of opportunity and then do that again. So that is on my blog. I'll put the links to show notes. But the thing I'd like to do with my VIP clients is add in this genetic test. So if you want to do a clarity report, that's what, this is on the screen, but we're going to go through and you get this report in the blood chemistry panel will come as well. This is my report. I had it just redone again. So this one is for August 27th, new report. The genetics are obviously the same because it's still me, but my blood chemistry panel, you can see my cholesterol is high, but I don't really care about high cholesterol. I'm more concerned about triglycerides, LP, little a and looking at my insulin and APOB, my A1C. But I took the high that Sean Wells talks about that berberine. I did do that glucovantage. You can get that on my full script. My A1C was better this time. My insulin's gotten better because I have these risk alleles. So that's why I love doing this. So this will be included clarity report. If you want to get it yourself, just let me know. I have to order it for you. So you have to pay me and then I have to order it. It's clarity through uh, True Diagnostics is offering this now for Wild Health Precision Medicine. So if you want to know your genetics, because this is huge, I think this is something we should all know. I'm genetically sensitive to saturated fat. So the whole thing of cholesterol and what we're eating and ancestral health, I am more sensitive to carbs. I can't do as much saturated fat. I appear to have normal insulin sensitivity and I should be able to consume carbs normally, but I'm genetically sensitive to carbs. So I need to monitor my insulin sensitivity markers, check in with what I'm eating and use the glucose monitor. I need to get healthy fats, but I can't do as much saturated fat. So I've been investigating that, but I look at the, these things of the two risk alleles, the IRS1, SNP, that's increased risk for insulin resistance and diabetes in response to high fat diet. So I'm always looking at those markers, metabolism and vitamins, methylation cycle. We go into meth. I lowered my homocysteine should be under eight. And what, when your homocysteine is higher, a lot of times we need a methylated B vitamin. So I started doing more B. I still need more folate. My B12 is good. And AST and ALT are more liver related, but my choline is how they look at it here. And that's why I'm trying to do more egg yolks, but now eggs are making me feel nauseated. So I'm taking out eggs and I'm going to get a choline supplement I can just get instead seeking health. So 
metabolism, vitamins and micronutrients. You can see these are all my genetic SNPs on the right. And so I look at more the two risk alleles. I'm a fast caffeine metabolizer. So I won't go through all this because this is really long, but I just wanted to show you if you want to get this test ordered, I'll order this for clients. It's $2.97 to do the genetic test. They're not doing the blood chemistry won't be on here anymore. That will be separate. So if you want to do my assessment program, I do just a 597. It's go through what you're doing now, nutritional therapy and tick form. And I do your blood chemistry panel and then just meet for one results session and recommendation session. But this is pretty cool. Your sleep. I just think this is fascinating. So I'll wrap up, but this is where microbiome tests would go on this page chronic disease. So what's my risk for cardiovascular disease, dementia, insulin resist inflammation? This section is really big for me. Now my dad died two years ago from heart disease, had kidney issues and a type of cancer. Red flag for me to take awareness, take ownership. And my sister is four years older and I wish she would do all this stuff, but I need to get her to realize you need to do this too. Got the same parents. Now the cardiovascular disease, you can see this. I'm this is why you need to be a health optimizer. Look at this genetically. I'm way on the far right, very high risk for gen cardiovascular disease. But if you are a health optimizer and taking ownership of your health, check out my risk is 1.1%. What is that based on? Looking at, again, my total cholesterol is higher than it, it should be. But that's actually, let's go look at my FDN cheat notes of um, my thyroid's low, um, going the wrong way. So when I do blood chemistry panel on clients, I go through these, their markers and check in if they're higher or lower, what is that correlating with? But my markers for LP, LDL, little p, LP, little a, these are things we want to look at, APOB. And if you read Peter Atia's book, Outlive, he'll talk about, he wants your APOB to be under 30, around 20. And CRP, we want under one, I'm 0 0.15. So my inflammatory markers, I don't have these other ones measured, CoQ10, Omega-3. I'd like to know what those are, but this is a big takeaway for you to finish here. What is your risk factor? What are your genetics? What do you need to do now if you're around my age to improve your future self? Dementia. You know, I'm really afraid of getting dementia and brain issues. So what do I need to do? My genetics, I vitamin D is still low. I want it 60 to 80. So we want that vitamin D level up higher. My T3 is low. I'm just going to do T3 meds, patient, but estrogen, progesterone, well, look at your hormones and look at what should you be for your age, height, weight, and your genetics, and what do you need to do? So that's a clarity report, you know, looking at insulin resistance, these markers. So I'll include them in my programs, but they're not, the new report that they're doing doesn't sadly have the blood chemistry panels, so I'll have to do it manually. So that is that. Read more about metabolic chaos. I also did another blog. I didn't get to the cortisol and weight gain connection. And how did I gain 30 pounds when I got adrenal fatigue? What are some recommendations? Of course, no sugar, vegetable oils, seed oils, manage overtraining, all that. And then the next show, I want to go into this anabolic resistance. So look at all that on my blog and let me know if you have questions. We'll dive into it a little bit deeper. I'm going to go play in the yard.